Hello everyone and a very big welcome to Crows, Spooky or Smarties at the National Museum of Ireland Natural History. My name is Emma and I work in the education department at the museum. I am really happy to welcome you to this fun family online talk today and invite you all to swoop in with me and discover more about these brainiest of birds. Crows are often thought to be supernatural or spooky birds. Today, we're going to discover the Irish links between crows and Halloween, and also learn about the real crow behavior that leads to people having these superstitions. Did you know that crows are one of the smartest groups of animals on the entire planet? Well, we're gonna find out why today. First off, what exactly are crows and what ones can be found here in Ireland? Well, there are over 40 different species or types of crows found around the world today. And you can find eight of them right here in Ireland. The word crow is often used to describe birds like rooks, ravens, jackdaws and carrion crows. All crows are actually songbirds, believe it or not, <laughs> and they belong to the crow or also known as the corvid family, corvidae. Other members of this family include jays and magpies. Most crows have similar body shapes. They've got short, strong legs, they've got rounded wings and quite large heads with different shaped beaks depending on the type. Members of the crow family are usually completely black or they can be mostly black with some grey, white and in some cases even other colours. All crows have quite large heads with really big brains that give these birds an exceptional memory and intelligence. This means they're able to learn, remember, and even solve problems. One reason why crows might have big brains, just like we do, is because they also have active social lives, just like us. This means that having a really good memory is useful. It stops them wasting time having to get to know their neighbours, their friends and their relatives every single time they meet them. Magpies can even recognise themselves in the mirror. Unlike robins, who will spend all day defending their territory from a reflection in the window, magpies ignore their reflection unless there is something wrong with it in which case they'll try to fix their appearance. As well as knowing their friends, crows also mate for life. Mates or pairs of crows will perch, fly, walk, call, and preen or tidy their feathers together. Some types of crows stay really close with their parents for years and even help them raise their younger siblings. These helpers are of course also learning the skills to feed, mind and protect baby crows or offspring. So why do people think that these birds have a spooky side? Ravens, a very large type of crow, are often found in the folklore, the myths, the legends and also the religions of northern people around the world. The Norse god Odin was accompanied by two ravens, Hugin meaning thought and Munin meaning memory. And they surveyed the world during the day and reported back to Odin every night. Some Northern Native Americans believed that the great raven created and recreated the world. Here in Ireland, crows have a long association with the supernatural. 
Many of us know that Halloween has some of its origins in a Celtic festival called Samhain. At this time of year, at the end of October, start of November, it was said that the veil between this world and the supernatural world was at its thinnest. The Annals of Ulster, which are part of the famous Irish mythological cycles, tell of a powerful Celtic goddess who was called the Morrigan, or Moriagan Osgwelga in Irish, and that means Great Queen. The Morrigan was the goddess of war, death, and the afterlife, and Samhain was her festival. This strong female character was said to have the ability to transform herself into a raven. And she famously foretold or predicted the death of the great Irish warrior, Cú Cullen. Crows were actually legally protected in England in the 1400s because of the services they provided for people, the things they did for us by cleaning up the city streets of rubbish. Less than 100 years later, people's appreciation of crows had turned to hatred. The crow family is a family of birds that often feeds by scavenging, which basically means flying around and taking opportunities to eat food that they find on the way. These birds feasted on the dead of medieval battlegrounds and people began to think that this was a link to the supernatural or spooky and they began to be known as omens, which means a sign of bad luck. This view of crows has been around for a very long time and has even resulted in negative language or negative words being used to describe them. The word for a group of crows changes depending on what type you're talking about. One example is an unkindness of ravens. And another example is a murder of crows. That means a group of crows, a murder of crows. Recent examples of spooky crows include the poem, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, and stories of spooky flocks of crows in films such as Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds and other Halloween themed films and TV shows. Even the famous nursery rhyme, one for sorrow, two for joy, associates the magpie, a type of crow, with bad luck. But what makes crows smarties? As mentioned earlier, crows have quite large heads with big brains that give these birds amazing skills of memory and intelligence. This means they're able to learn, remember, and also solve problems. They have really complicated social lives, and one of the things that makes them stand out to humans and get noticed is the large gatherings. Most types of crow like to roost or sleep with others at night. Rooks are famous for their large community roosts called rookeries. But roosts are information centres for crows. The crows who find food during the day will fly back to the roost at night and they will tell other crows, using sounds and body language, where they can find the same food the next day. So they'll give directions to other crows that might be hungry. Crows have the ability to recognise individuals, so they can recognise their friends and their family and their neighbours. They can even recognise individuals from other types of animals though. There are many amazing stories of wild crows bringing gifts to the humans that feed them. Crows also help each other. American crows have been seen feeding sick or handicapped family members. In some cases, crows have been seen having 
what we would call funerals. These crows may, might be gathering around a dead crow in order to learn links between that particular place and danger. Crows and ravens can even be considered to have basic language skills. They can talk. In Europe, common ravens have been documented using up to 20 different calls. Scientists discover some crows can communicate using over 30 different caw, quark or scream sounds. They make all of these different sounds to alert each other to danger, to mark their territory, call other crows to their location and just to make friends. But good talkers can also make good liars. Ravens and Western scrub jays have been seen trying to trick or deceive other crows that might be watching them. Caching means to store extra food to use later on. Many different types of crows do this, including the ravens and Western scrub jays. However, when a crow is hiding a piece of food, sometimes they'll only pretend to put it in one place before they hide it in their beak and instead move and cache it or store it somewhere else. They are alert to potential thieves who might be watching them. Interestingly, scrub jays are better at this if they have previously stolen food from another scrub jay. It takes a thief to know a thief. Ravens have also been seen working with wolves in Yellowstone National Park in America. The ravens will feed on the leftovers from the wolf kills. And sometimes they'll even lead wolves to nearby carcasses hidden under the snow. The wolves help the ravens to access the food inside the frozen carcass and the wolves get to eat as well. So everybody gets something. Did you know that crows like to play? This might explain why people think that they are mischievous or tricksters in many myths and legends. They have been seen playing with sticks, and other objects, swinging on branches, dancing, jumping, playing chasing, and even body surfing on snowy slopes. Of course, play is an important part of training for life for us all. It helps them sharpen their coordination, their skills needed to catch their food. It helps them learn how to get on with others and interact. It teaches them about the world they live in and also is just a sign of a curious mind. Even grown-up crows have been seen playing. Play in grown-up animals is seen as a sign of success. If they're able to get all of their important jobs done, like finding food, looking after their family, and they still have time left over to play, they are doing a really good job. One of the real geniuses of the crow world is the New Caledonian crow from an island in the Pacific. These crows make spears and hooks from sticks to fish food out of cracks and crevices. What's more, Right and left-handed birds will make tools that are best for them. This is very complicated and puts them in the same group alongside gorillas, chimps, and even us. Humans and crows have been interacting for thousands of years. From our hunting and gathering days, to the dawn of farming, to our wars, cities, our rubbish, and even bird feeding, humans and crows have always come into contact with each other. As we live together, not only are we getting better at reading their actions, 
Well, they are getting better at reading our actions too. Another example of animals being able to read human body language and voices and so on is domestic dogs. Dogs have become very good at figuring out what we mean by paying close attention to our hand movements, our eyes, and also our voices in order to get food. Crows can also read our body language and our voices. Ravens are very good at following the eye line or the gaze of humans to see what exactly they might be looking at. Maybe crows that regularly interact with humans can monitor our body language and follow our eyes to potential food or danger, just like dogs do today. These familiar birds provide us all with a link to nature. They're widespread, being found on almost every continent, apart from Antarctica and also South America. They are easily spotted, partially due to their large gatherings and also because of their distinctive black colour. But their behaviour and mystery continues to fascinate us today. Next time you see a crow, take a moment to appreciate this brainiest of birds. If you'd like to test your skills against the cleverest of crows, you can download this free fun activity sheet from museum.ie. Thanks for watching. Bye.